God. It is only by your gift that your faithful people offer you true and laudable service. Grant that we may run without stumbling to obtain your heavenly promises. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Today's first reading begins a beautiful story of the devotion of a young farm woman to her widowed Hebrew mother-in-law. As the story goes on, we will see how Ruth becomes important to Jewish and Christian history. A reading from the book of Ruth. In the days when the judges ruled, there was a famine in the land, and a certain man of Bethlehem in Judah went to live in the country of Moab, he, his wife, and two sons. The name of the man was Elamelech, and the name of his wife, Naomi. And the names of his two sons were Malam and Kylia, the Eph Ephraites from Bethlehem and Judah. They went into the country of Moab and remained there. The Emelech, the husband of Naomi, died, and she was left with her two sons. These took Moabite wives, the name of one was Orpah, in name of the other Ruth, when they had lived there about ten years, Mahmalan and Kalian also died, so the woman was left without her two sons and her husband. Then she started to return with her daughters-in-law from the country of Moab, for she had heard in the country of Moab that the Lord had considered his people and given them food. So she set out for the place where she had been living, she and her two daughters-in-law. And they went on their way to go back to the land of Judah. But Naomi said to her two daughters-in-law, Go back, each of you, to your mother's house. May the Lord deal kindly with you as you have dealt with the dead and with me. The Lord grant that you may find security, each of you in the house of your husband. Then she kissed them, and they wept aloud. And they said to her, No, we will return with you to your people. But Naomi said, Turn back, my daughters. Why will you go with me? Do I still have sons in my womb, then you become your husbands? Turn back, my daughters. Go your way, for I am too old to have a husband. Even if I thought there was hope for me, even if I should have a husband tonight and bear sons, would you then wait until they were grown? Would you then refrain from marrying? No, my daughters. It is far more bitter for me than for you, because the hand of the Lord has turned against me. Then they wept aloud again, Orpah kissed her mother-in-law, but Ruth clung to her. So she said, See, your sister-in-law has gone back to her people and to her God to return after your sister-in-law. But Ruth said, Do not press me to leave you, or to turn back from following you. Where you go, I will go. Where you lodge, I will lodge. Your people shall be my people, and your God, my God. Where you die, I will die. There will I be buried. May the Lord do thus, and so to me, and more as well, even if death parts me from you. When Naomi saw that she was determined to go with her, she said no more to her. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let's read responsibly from Psalm 146. Hallelujah! Praise the Lord, O my soul. I will praise the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praises to my God while I have my being. So God be trust in rulers, nor in any child of earth. When they breathed their last, they returned to earth, and in that day their thoughts perish. Happy are they who have the God of Jacob for their help, whose world is in the world of their God. Who made heaven and earth, the seas, and all that is in them, who keeps his promise forever. Who gives justice to those who are oppressed, and food to those who hunger. The Lord sets the prisoners free. 
The Lord opens the eyes of the blind. The Lord lifts up those who are bowed down. The Lord loves the righteous. The Lord cares for the stranger. He sustains the orphan and widow, but frustrates the way of the wicked. The Lord shall reign forever, your God, O Zion, throughout all generations. Hallelujah. In our New Testament reading, we learn that Christ has obtained everlasting redemption, not through animal sacrifices in the past, but through the sacrifice of his own body and blood. We may now worship God with a purified conscience as we are sanctified through Christ. A reading from the letter to the Hebrew Christians. When Christ came as a high priest of the good things that have come, then through the greater and perfect tent, not made with hands, that is, not of his create, not of this creation. He entered once for all into the holy place, not with the blood of goats and calves, but with his own blood, thus obtaining eternal redemption. For if the blood of goats and bulls, with the sprinkling of the ashes of a heifer, sanctifies those who have been defiled, so that their flesh is purified, how much more will the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit, Offered himself without blemish to God, purify our conscience from dead works to worship the living God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Jesus answered them well. He asked him, 
which commandment is first of all? Jesus answered, the first is, hear, O Israel, the Lord our, your God. The Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your mind, with all your strength. The second is this, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. Then the scribe said to him, you are right, teacher. You have truly said that he is one, and besides him there is no other. And to love him with all the heart, with all the understanding, with all the strength, and to love one's neighbor as oneself, this is much more important than all whole burnt offerings and sacrifices. When Jesus saw that he answered wisely, he said to him, You are not far from the kingdom of God. After that, no one dared to ask him any questions. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Christ. Written down, right? 
So at this point in history, in 70, the temple has been destroyed by Rome, the big temple in Israel. And this was devastating to the Jewish people. The temple was the center of worship. This is where God lived. This is the only place you could really interact with God. So how could they properly worship without the temple? And Mark's audience for this text were Jewish people who were missing their temple, but they were also Jewish people who believed in Jesus. So that set them apart from the mainstream, so they're on the fringes. And Mark's audience also included Gentiles, non-Jewish people, who followed Jesus. And it was determined that those Gentiles didn't have to convert to Judaism. So this, comp this complicated life for them, right? They're all together, they all follow Jesus, but they're trying to figure out how they're going to get along and worship together in this new community when they have all these different rules. And other Jewish groups didn't necessarily like this new mixed community and would give them a hard time and accuse them of not being real Jews. Does this all sound familiar to us? This was a difficult time. Lots of growing pains and lots of questions. So when the Gospel of Mark is written, these tensions and questions are in the front of the author's mind. Okay? So when he writes down the stories of Jesus, we assume it's a man, Mark, right? <laughs> writes down the stories of Jesus. These themes are carried out into the story. So today's story addresses the question of which commandment is the greatest. And yes, the commandments do have rank. Some commandments are more important than others. Just like some sacraments are seen to be more important than other sacraments. If you want to learn more about that, join our confirmation class. <laughs> <laughs> There's my pitch. The underlying idea of this passage, according to Ron Allen, is what is essential to Jewish identity? When we literally cannot go to the temple and do our sacrifices because the temple does not exist, how are we to still be faithful in worship? Right? And Jesus says, sacrifices are good and holy. But the main thing is to love God and love your neighbor as yourself. That's the main thing. And Jesus and the scribe agree. Which is a great and surprising thing in the gospel. Because the law and the Old Testament, as we call it, or the Hebrew Bible, as other people call it, get a bad reputation from us Christian preachers sometimes, right? The few Pharisees and Sadducees in the gospel make us think that everybody was legalistic and unforgiving about the law back then. But that wasn't really true. There, it was more important to honor the spirit of the law than to uphold the exact letter of it. Because it was extremely difficult to follow 613 laws. As long as you did your best in love, you were fine in the eyes of the majority of the leaders of the Jewish religion. And that's what Mark is getting at today to tell his community. Ron Allen continues to say that Mark makes the theological judgment that while the temple and sacrifice may have played an important part in Judaism in an earlier era, those things are not essential to Jewish identity. With the temple destroyed, the community can no longer practice burnt offerings and sacrifice. But the congregation can be authentically Jewish by practicing the monotheism of God of Israel and loving neighbors. So this mix, mixed congregation in Mark's time can get together and worship and be a community. The Jewish folks without the temple and the Gentile folks without converting to Judaism fully. The community can be faithful no matter what the other groups think about them. Because it's all about loving your neighbors. Now, you have just heard me say, <laughs> and Jesus say, we don't need a temple to worship God. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> really okay? So that is true. We don't need a temple to worship God. We don't need a church to worship God. The bishop accuses me always of talking myself out of a job. <laughs> and I say, if everybody suddenly 
started acting rightly in the world and treated each other well, I would happily retire and become a dental hygienist or something. <laughs> Unfortunately, that's not usually going to happen. We don't need a church to worship God. We choose to have a church to worship God, correct? Churches are made beautiful to honor God. If you look at our stained glass windows, our pretty metal one of a guy getting murdered right up here, St. <laughs> Stephen. I thought that was pretty metal when I came here, honestly. It's the most metal. The purpose of the stained glass is to honor God. It does have the names of our loved ones on it because we want to remember our loved ones. But the main purpose of it is to show our love for God, right? Similarly, our music is a prayer offering to God. So we do not clap for our musicians during church. Not because they're not wonderful, because they're very wonderful. You guys are great, thank you. Because this music is an offering to honor God. It's a form of prayer, right? And I don't spend hours preparing sermons just to hear myself talk. They are to honor God and to offer some kind of wisdom to you that you can take or leave and interact with in your lives, right? Church is an experience that we all participate in together. It's not a show for you to watch. It's something that we do together either in person or online. So all that we do on Sundays is to honor God and recharge ourselves for the week of service to God that is to come. Sunday morning is just a small part of what we're called to do. But for many people, it ends up being the end goal, right? Instead of the jumping off point. So we are in the middle of our stewardship drive and our pledge drive. And in two weeks, we're going to bless all of your offerings to God and start preparing our budgets for next year. Never the most pleasant part of a priest's job, but it is necessary because we need monetary contributions, frankly. I will tell you, we have bills, right? We have leaks. We have a leak that went into the electrical box and shorted out a bunch of lights this week. Things that need to be fixed. But besides that, what we need more is active participation in the mission of God and giving of your time, talents, and treasures. Giving to the church is a prayerful thing, a joyful thing. And it should come from our first fruits, meaning it's not an afterthought. Like, oh yeah, I gotta do that church thing. We give to the church because we believe that our church, St. Stephen's, has value to the community, and we want that value to the community to continue. That's why we give, right? I tithe 10% of my pay to the church. Most clergy do this, which causes clergy to get audited a lot by the IRS, because they say, why do you give money to your employer? Anyway. I can see why that's a little suspect to them. That's why I have a good accountant. <laughs> but we're not required to tithe or pledge. We do this, well I, I'll, I'll speak for myself. I tithe because I believe that St. Stephen's has a great potential for mission in Fort Washington. I wouldn't have come here if I didn't because no one wants to take a job where there's no potential, right? When we have a clear mission and outreach the community, then people will come and join us in mission and the church growth happens, right? Our Sunday services are beautiful, I can admit. I don't do most of the work, so I can say it. Our church Sunday services are gorgeous and they're beautiful and very prayerful. And that might attract people at first, but in these modern times, there are so many options out there, right? What keeps people engaged in Jesus' mission is the good works that we do in the community. So this is my stewardship plea. Don't worry, I won't have any more after this. This is the one. So we need to focus on loving our neighbors, 
and making disciples for Christ, not making members, okay? We're not members. We're not members of a church. Membership is passive. That's like being in a club. You pay your dues and then you get to use the pool when you want, right? Discipleship is an active mission. Active in whatever way you are able to be active, okay? There's no one fit for everybody. Everyone is different. So that's my theme this year from James. Faith without works is dead. So I urge you to prayerfully consider your pledges, but also your participation, and commit to making St. Stephen's a vibrant parish that is full with active disciples. Active in whatever way you can be. I have faith that we can do it. Right? We need everyone to work together and realize that the world has changed. Things are not as they were. And you know, thank God for that. Because if we never changed, nothing ever changed, that would be pretty boring. But we would never learn or grow or make things better. I don't want to go back 50 years ago. Please. I'm not meant to be a housewife. Some people are, not me. We always learn and grow and change. And it's not easy, because God never promised us an easy path. Never once. You can look in the Bible. But God did promise us a love and grace-filled path. Remember always Jesus' teachings today. Love God. Love your neighbor. There is no other commandment greater than these. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Please join me in the nineteenth creed. We believe in an Let's pray for the church and for the world. Grant, Almighty God, that all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. Open our hearts and our ears to the good news, and teach us to fear, love, and trust in you with all our hearts and souls and strength and minds, and teach us to love one another as ourselves. Help us discern how to use the gifts you have entrusted to us for the service you intend to feed the hungry, to give drink to those who thirst, to shelter the homeless, to clothe the naked, to visit the sick and imprisoned, and to bury the dead. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our nation and all nations that your peace would be manifest in every corner of the earth. 
We pray especially for our President Joseph and our Governor Kathy, that you may give them wisdom, strength, and humility in fulfilling their duties to our nation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give us all reverence for the earth as your own creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others, and to your honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless all whose lives are closely linked with ours, and grant that we may serve Christ in them, and love one another as he loves us. We ask for your blessing, O Lord, on all daycare centers, schools, colleges, and universities, and any other place where people will gather together. We ask that you keep all the children, youth, teachers, and staff safe from disease, and give them wisdom and strength in this time of plague. God of love, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Bless, O Lord, physicians, nurses, first responders, and all others who minister to the suffering, granting them wisdom and skill, sympathy and patience. We pray especially for Dr. Elizabeth Engelman, Ava Longmire, Susan Dietz Massengill, Dr. Dan Griffin, Karen Liu, Brenda Marshall, Dr. Rachel Simpson, Dr. Jeff Karowski, Kat Bates, Marina Guerra, and all those responding to natural and human-made disasters throughout the world. God of love, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation. We pray for the sick, the aged, and the infirm, for those with physical or mental disabilities, that all may have access to proper health care and that God's loving embrace may be felt by all who suffer. We also hold before you those who have requested our prayers. Hank, Peter, Bob, Joe, Nina, Mark, Pam, MB, Marion, Clay, Kai, Frank, Mark, Michael, Kimberly, Tina, Carol, Sue D, Todd, Debbie, Carol, Stephanie, Einstein, Danny M, Pamela, Martin, Charlie, Tom, Harry, Barbara D, Amy, Father Guy, who's sitting vigil for his mother, the kidnapped missionaries being held for ransom in Haiti, the people of Afghanistan in Haiti, those hurt by gun violence in our nation, and all those affected by COVID-19. God of comfort and healing, in your mercy, Hear our we pray for all immigrants, refugees, and pilgrims from around the world, that they may be welcomed in our midst and be treated with fairness, dignity, and respect. God of outcasts and wanderers, in your mercy. Hear our we commend to your mercy all who have died, that your will for them may be fulfilled. And we pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. May all who have died rest in peace, especially those killed nationwide by violent crime, millions worldwide who have died from the coronavirus pandemic, as well as all those we remember today in the stillness of our hearts. Lord, in your mercy. You are our prayer. Almighty and eternal God, ruler of all things in heaven and earth, mercifully accept the prayers of your people and strengthen us to do your will. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us not confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we
Mother Lauren called it kind of like had a perfect segue with her sermon about community and service. And um, I just wanted to say this is a, this carnival is a little bit different in that usually today would be the day that we would be all hands in the parish hall setting up. But we have the wonderful good fortune of being a polling area for November 2nd, so people will come and be voting. So we can't set up anything for the carnival until after that. So here's my request. If you are available Thursday, 7 p.m., or any time on Friday, please come to the parish hall. And if you can, please email wardens at stephenspw.org so we know how many people we have because we have to get everything that's in the fair closets from downstairs, upstairs on Thursday, and then finish assembling the carnival all day Friday. My husband's taking the day off. My kids are just going to have to fend for themselves. <laughs> <laughs> We're doing it. But I wanted to give you an update because this, you know, is a wonderful opportunity to really serve your community. The kids ask me every year, why do you do this? And I remember the story of them, you know, when they were little. I'm like, why did we wake up at a ridiculous time in the morning to get Christmas set up for the kids, right? It's because we want to see all these little kids' joys and faces when they're petting a bunny for the first time, or seeing the llama, or an, and being here at the church doing that. I have pictures of when Kinnon was in my stomach, mm -hmm. and I was here at the carnival with Millen on the pony ride, right? Those are memories that the kids will always remember. And to have a little piece of that joy when they are 40 and 50, and they can come back and say, hey, I remember riding the pony at St. Stephen's all these years. This is our 116th carnival and fair in the Port Washington community. So I really want to, you guys to be able to share in a little bit of that joy that we get. And we are exhausted at the end of the day, but we all sit around and we laugh because so many times other churches, parishioners come and say, yeah, wow, you guys don't argue. You guys, <laughs> you guys have so much fun. Don't you, you guys don't argue about, your, we can never do this at our church because we all argue about what wants to happen. So, um, that's my little plea. Come um, 7 o'clock Thursday um, and any time Friday. And we need more volunteers for the day of. Um, there's not that many booths, so the more people that we have, the, the we can change off shifts a little bit better. So just email us. Um, financial update, we have raised thus far on the online bake sale $2,811. So um, thank you, bakers. And everyone, and everyone that's donated, there are, a few, there are still items available for sale, and if you want to just donate, you can click on the donate link and you can donate online. Thanks, dear. <laughs> I would never say that in real life. She's wearing a deer costume, so it's okay. <laughs> I know, I went online to buy, to pre-order my baked goods, and I was like, that's sold out already? What the heck, I mean, come on, it's been like three hours. But it's a good thing. So yes, we are having uh, elections on Tuesday, so stay away from the parish hall on Tuesday. <laughs> Unless you're designated to vote in the district that's voting here, which is not me, I have to go to the firehouse. Who knows? Okay, anyway. <laughs> um, and then to look ahead, the Interfaith Thanksgiving service, which we all love, is going to be in person again this year, but it will be at the Sousa Van Shell. Yay! On, the, on Sunday the 21st at 3.30, so that everybody's services are over and we're all good. Um, so come on down on Sunday the 21st at 3.30. And the host this year is Temple Beth Israel. If there's bad weather, we'll go to Temple Beth or Zero and do it <laughs> with our masks on. But hopefully it should be fine. Um, I think that's everything. Next Sunday, we're going to do All Saints. Because today's Halloween, so it's All Hallows Eve. Not quite All Saints, so tomorrow's All Saints Day. So it has to be transferred to next week. So next Sunday is All Saints Day, and we're going to have our traditional youth parade of saints. And it's going to be really fun. So 
We'll read out the names of the people who have passed away in the last year um, that we have record of during the prayers. But if you have anyone you want to add to the list, you can. we'll have a time where you can say aloud the names of your friends and family or you know, public figures, anybody that you want to remember specifically on All Saints. So we're going to do that this year. I'm just letting you know so you can bring a list if you have a list. You can bring your list along and read out the names during that time of prayer. I think that's it. And amongst anyone else. Besides birthdays and anniversaries. I'm not forgetting. No birthdays? Anyone on Zoom town that has a birthday or anniversary? Okay, wonderful. <laughs> The banana says no. No, the banana says no. <laughs> All right. What? He's wearing normal clothes. What are you talking about? <laughs> this is only a joke you get if you're in the room. Okay. Ascribe to the Lord the honor and do his name. Bring offerings and come into his court.
joining our voices with angels and archangels and all the company of heaven, we forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name.
Thank you.